Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Chosen Podcast. I'm your host, Caleb Spittler, Director of Member Relationships here at the King's Council. And today, I am so excited for our guest. We have Justin Mayna on with us. Justin, how's your day going, brother? It's going great, man. I, I, I love opportunities like this, and I do believe that anybody listening, that they are going to get something from this because... You know, anyway, I don't want to say too much, but I want to I want to let you do your thing. But I love obstacles. I love the Lord. And I know that I've prayed up before this and believe everyone will get value. Yes, um, sir. Who's listening. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Justin, if I do a quick Google search of you, I see you've been an actor, a TV host, a fitness model, American Ninja Warrior, business owner, philanthropist. I mean, I could go on and on here. You've lived a full life, my man. It's crazy, and I'm only 36, so I, I, I believe that I have many more things to add to that list. Excellent. Well, today, really, my goal is to to kind of go past the Wikipedia version. I want to, you know, get into your story, hear where you started. I mean, did you come out of the womb with a six-pack, or did you have to, like, work out for that? Or, or you know, tell us a little bit of your background and, and really how you got into some of the things that you got into. I love it. Never judge a book by its cover, because if you knew me growing up, you would have never thought I would ever be an American Ninja Warrior, or at least the way people look at me now. They think I I was a jock growing up. I'm a natural. I do backflips. I got picked last on teams, even in kickball. I got picked on at school. Some surprising facts. Let's see. I was in the math club. I was in band. I played the clarinet. Uh, Not even something cool like percussion. Right. Um, (laughs) And also, like, I wheeled around a suitcase. And another thing, I was so insecure, not that this has anything to do with it, but I was insecure and weak. But my first kiss was at the age of 24 in acting class. (laughs) So I don't know. It's just I I, I was very different growing up. And it took positive encouragement through some mentors and my own relationship and walk with the Lord that helped me become the man I am today. Excellent. Well, let's jump into that a little bit deeper because... I uh, I actually had Wendy on here, you know, Wendy Pet. She yep. was talking about how we had a little bit of a conversation around how oftentimes insecurities or, you know, not feeling like you're accepted, getting bullies, those types of things can really drive people into excellence. And it seems like a lot of high performers, almost if you track it back, they're starting from a place of trying to earn that love and acceptance by achieving lots of things. I mean, was that the case for you or or really what drove you into some of these these different fields? Well, I'm very grateful that I grew up the way I did because it helped me have compassion for those people that feel left out or ostracized. So I'm glad that I can relate to that, but I wanted acceptance. I wanted more affirmation from my dad, you know, and he was doing his best, but it wasn't nearly enough for me. So I can empathize with that and relate to that. When, you know, one day I'd be God willing and become a father, I can think of those things. You know, I wanted affirmation and I, I was the class clown. I I did whatever I could, even at the sake of being made fun of myself, if I can get attention, you know, that, that was worth not getting attention. And the bad part about that is you end up falling into the trap of becoming a people pleaser. Sure. And that was my trap. And then it all came to like, really not knowing who I was, what I wanted to become, what is my purpose? What am I doing in this life? And it took time to figure that out. What my Everybody has their own unique set of gifts and talents. And I think once you figure out what that is and also realize that if you do none of it and if you fail many times, God will love you no less than he Mm. already does. And that was like, once I realized that and truly knew it and experienced failure in those areas and didn't get affirmation from other people, do I do feel loved? Do I still feel loved or do I feel ashamed that I'm not performing as well. So as a performer, naturally being a musician and wanting to perform for my affirmation, I had to learn that it's okay to not get that affirmation from man, but know that that affirmation will give you a false sense of love. Mm. If you're basing that on getting true love, unconditional love has nothing to do with your performance. So Mm. that's that, I don't know. I, that, that really helped me step into what I've been called to do because I wasn't people pleasing anymore. And every now and then just to let you know, I haven't overcome that, but I've learned to be able to identify when I'm people pleasing better now. Mm. 
That's so good, brother. And we're I think we're going to circle back to some of those things there, but tell me how you got started. I mean, how did you go from last picked, you know, on the the playground to doing backflips or across the beach? I mean, if I go on your Instagram, your life is just full of adventure and oftentimes it looks like physical, you know, thrill seeking type thing. So, how did you kind of start to make that shift even did you have opportunities or where did this really start for you? Well, you know what? I, I started realizing that you don't have to do much in order to enjoy so much of the beauty that's almost hidden. Oddly enough, I may share a little later how yesterday I always heard of this hidden cliff in San Diego and I had some free time and I decided I'm going to try to discover it. And I, I found some really difficult ways to get there. Couldn't quite make it, prayed about it, ended up finding a way to actually get there. It's really amazing. It's actually on my story right now of making it to this hidden cave on the sunset cliffs. Beautiful. But anyway, I just know that life with Christ is a wonderful adventure. And I didn't know that, but the way it was first modeled was somebody seeing potential in me and highlighting that. And then them asking me, Justin, what do you want to do when you grow up? What, what are you passionate about? I didn't grow up people asking me that. They just kind of told me, hey, this is what you should do. You should do this. You should do that. But nobody really encouraged me. So it helped having a mentor in my life, somebody who was a friend of the families who believed in me and said, Hey, you're stronger than you think. Wow. You want to be an actor. You should do that. Wow. You don't, you know what? Um, if you, if you want to learn how to do a backflip, you need to overcome that fear. Mm. And that taught me that there was a lot of fear in my life that was holding me back from becoming the person I, I could become. It was fear, false evidence appearing real. But I learned that if you want to live the fullest life, you have to be willing to overcome your fear, but your worst fear, you will be challenged whether or not you believe that faith is more powerful or fear is more powerful. Your worst fear, you're going to be tested with that. And, mm. but those are where the, the greatest breakthroughs happen. Mm. I love that. So somebody so came along to, to let you know. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody came along and they saw you, they spoke into your life. They, they broke you out of some different fear ways of thinking. How old were you when that happened? It started when I was 13. I never thought of at that age. I, I still associated myself with being this boy, you know, instead mm -hmm. of uh, a rising man. And so it took this person encouraging me and my strength saying, man, you're really strong. And I didn't really think I was strong at all, but he highlighted the areas that I was good at. And I wasn't used to that. Mm. So that's how it started. Mm. Well, there's a message for everyone out there, whether you are a teenager or something, or if you interact with teenagers. I know for myself, I'm speaking at a youth retreat next week. And so even as you're saying that, it just reminds me to, you know, what a little bit of encouragement can do in someone's life. I mean, it sounds like for you, it put you on a completely different course than where you were headed. It did. And it, I had to, for a moment, believe in somebody else's potential mm. than my own. And you know, with that, I actually got highlighted a, a scripture that I wanted to just share today. It's out of Ephesians 3.20. And it says, and this, and, and while I read this, just think that God loves you. He has a great plan for you. He wants to fulfill the desires in your heart. He wants to give you a new heart, fulfill you even better, even more complete than you can do on your own. And this goes in alignment with that. It says, now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Mm. So when we have that, he's able to work above and beyond all that we ask or think. So if he loves us, he's going to want to fulfill those things, but he can go above and beyond that. I personally want that. I think God knew what he was doing when he created us selfish. But when we can align that with his will, we can exceed our own understanding. And we realize we are much better with him than without, you know, we have to be in a way selfish about being selfless and trusting him in that. Mm, so good, man. Now, I haven't asked you any questions about faith thus far, but it is just flowing yeah. out of you. So let's just go there. I mean, did you grow up in a Christian home yeah. or, or how did you come to faith? I grew up in a Christian home, but it wasn't until actually this one guy came up to me and he asked me, hey, do you know if you're, you go to heaven? And I said, yeah, I think so. I wasn't a hundred percent. I was being like honest. some so guy in the 13, street or, or like, no, no, this was a, a friend of the families, okay. friend of the families. And I was actually, I was a uh, mid teen, maybe I think I was 16, 15, okay. 16 years old. He asked me if I, if I knew I'd go to heaven and I wasn't a hundred percent sure, even though I grew up in a Christian home, I even remember praying the prayer, but I didn't really have a full understanding that that was something 
that your salvation could be something you were you can be sure of. That's when I knew I was God's and that can never be taken away. And that's when I started walking the Christian walk the best way I could in the ups and downs of that. Mm. What would you say to somebody listening to this right now? And maybe they want something of a relationship with God, but they just don't even know where to start. Okay. I would say this, regardless of where, well, first of all, you're on the right track if you're searching for a relationship with the Lord, because even in the Bible, it says, if you truly seek him, you will find him. Mm. That's like, it's almost like God saying, Hey, test me. You know, I do believe that we'll both, well, everybody, regardless of where you are on the spectrum of what you believe, be open to, there's a lot of things in life we don't know. If I were to draw a circle in front of you and ask you, how much knowledge do you actually have of all the knowledge in the universe? I'd be at like 0.0001%. Right. There's a really strong possibility that there are things that you don't know spiritually. I would just say for those of you who are struggling or say, hey, I'm a, I'm agnostic, or even those who are maybe an atheist, like be open to something spiritually, but be authentic about it. You may have a lot of examples of your life of people doing the God thing, and it's it's very hypocritical. They may not be representing God's kingdom in the way it should be. But with that being said, I would say surround yourself with people where you see good fruit coming from them and take advice from them. Find out what is working for them. The scripture that comes to me right now, just say my contract right now, I am loved and valued by Jesus. And because I seek godly wisdom daily, I am a courageous leader on a mission to help people overcome fear and not live a complacent life. When it comes to helping people overcome fear, I think of the scripture, 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. That sound mind is what will allow you to sleep at night without your mind racing. So if you see people in your life and it seems like they have peace, that's something that I think a lot of people don't have. So if you don't have peace in your life or joy, even when a storm is coming, look to those people, find out mm. what works for them. They may not be a believer, but the people who I look up to spiritually, they have a sound mind mm. and they have a balance in a lot of areas of their life. Why? Because they are seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to them, including your dreams, your desires, mm -hmm. all those things. It just falls into place. But if your allegiance is first to family or your wife or husband, what if they get things wrong? They're most likely going to get wrong because mm -hmm. I'll just tell you this. My mentor, the one who helped me overcome my fear of sharks, overcoming a backflip, overcoming my insecurities, that person, it ended up being the same person that the enemy used to create a very dysfunctional relationship. Hmm. There was like emotional dependency and, and other things. There were so many things that that person who was my mentor eventually became somebody that I needed to set up boundaries and say, hey, this is not going in the right direction. This was somebody who led me to the Lord. Hmm. So it's funny, if you do not seek the Lord first, that person that could be in your life who could have great intentions for you could be the very person that the enemy can grab hold of because they are a human being, mm -hmm. can destroy your own walk with the Lord. I think that's what the church has been for a mm -hmm. lot of non-believers. Oh, oh, they're the church. Oh yeah, they, 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 they're hypocritical. Oh yeah, the po yeah the, those Christians, yeah, they abuse children. And so mm -hmm. just seek first the Lord. Do you think a lot of people walk away from church life because their faith was rooted in some kind of mentor or person like that, where that person lets them down and then they just think, all right, forget this. This is, you know, like you said, hypocritical. I think for a lot of people who, I think for younger people who have never developed a true intimacy with the Lord, that will happen. But I think for those who are older They've never really developed the intimacy with the Lord, an authentic relationship where on their own, when adversity comes, can they see the goodness of God in that? And if you've never developed that depth, mm. you're going to fall away from him. But once you see that goodness, you know, like I, I even wrote down another scripture. I'm going to just read this because it's literally talking about what we're talking about, like taste and see that the Lord is good and blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Like, and, you know, in, in adversity, God wants you to know that you can't, you need rest and he is a good place for rest. And I think a lot of people have a false sense of security, trusting more in their mentors or more in their church or their pastor than they do in the Lord himself. They'll go by other people's hard work. They'll go by other people's prayers, but they'll never go through that, those prayers on their own. Mm. And that'll only get you so far yes. because there will be times in your life 
that you will be tested and you will be alone and tested with, do you have the perseverance when nobody's around you, when everyone's failed you? Yes. Is the Lord still good? Is he going to provide for you? So I would say they haven't had a revelation of God's full, never ending love and protection mm. for your life. Yes. They give up too soon, almost like not to get political, but like the vaccination. Some friends, man, dear friends, they said, man, I was forced to take the vaccine. I'm like, no, no, bro. You were never forced. I don't care if a gun was to your head. But I check me, Shaq, and Abednego. They weren't forced. They had a choice. Do they bow down to another God or do they walk in the fire? Mm -hmm. They made a choice. People make choices in life based on what they think would be best for them. If you're a Christian, that's a part of who you are. That needs to be part of your decision making. And when you make a choice for something, that's where God's going to bless it, especially when there's a lot of weight. And if I, I like to make choices, God loves bold prayers. I got a bold prayer where I'm going to know my future spouse by the end of this month. It's crazy, but God loves bold prayers. And then it's almost like, all right, God, I'm, I'm laying it on the line. Let's see what happens. So you haven't met this girl yet. You're just believing in faith that you are going to meet no, your future spouse. Or maybe it's I crazy. <laughs> and honestly, five months ago, I, I was like, God, I was just like praying. And I said, God, I know you've honored some really bold prayers I've had. We won't get into it, but I said, God, I would love to be able to be, I would love to be married. And if I'm not, if I'm not seeking it now, it'll never happen. And there's a lot of clarity, like to give you an example, I wrote down my year goals and I said, I would be speaking on eight platforms, one being 8,000 people, but what eight platforms by the end of the year, mm. I've already spoken on six. It's wow. crazy. Just through what, by way of podcasts and two live events. And it's like, wow, it never happened before. I never spoke on six podcasts before, mm. but now it's just kind of coming my way. But if I don't make it known, you have not because you ask not. So yes. I'm like, all right, God, I want a spouse. And you know what? I'm going to actually set a date and said, God, it's in your hands. I don't know if it's going to happen, but the faith of mustard seed. I'm like, God, this is the date that I would know my wife. Not that I'd be married, but that I would know her. Maybe she's in my life and it hasn't been revealed but I'm just saying by January 29th that I would know my future spouse and we could revisit and see if that happened. But I'm just, I'm putting that out there, man. Well, I don't know what date this podcast is going to be released, but you're going to have a whole flood of uh, uh, DMs coming oh, in once my... we release that. But uh, let's... Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. We better be careful here. I don't want to go too far down that road. Let's come back to, you had talked about um, gifts and talents. Obviously, you're a talented guy. Yeah. I believe that God has given you gifts, something to bring to his His people and you know people outside of the church. What do you think are your biggest gifts and talents? Thank you. Thank you, by the way. I would say compassion for people who have felt left out and alone. So I, I will go out of my way and sacrifice finances, time, money to let somebody know that I care about them, mm. that if they're on the point of breaking, I, I want them to know that they're not alone. And then again, I'm not their savior, but if I know that it, if it's within my power that I can genuinely help somebody out and I pray about it and God gives me a peace, because mm. not every time that you, you, know, you see somebody, you can help them out, you're meant to, because God also wants you to have boundaries to be able to know that you can say no and not feel guilty. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ways you can go about that. I, I, can, I don't want to go on a tangent, but um, I would say my gifts are to inspire children through athletics. God's given me that gift. I want to use it to inspire them. I do believe I'm meant to be in this world and not of it. I've had some close friends now that literally I met at a nightclub. And if I was that Christian who said, oh, I'm not going to step in a nightclub. No, no, I'm me personally. I'm different. I come here. I know what my intentions are. I'm come. I'm, I'm here to take territory. And I know I'm here to influence, not be influenced, especially if I go into some of these dark places. But I know my mind why I'm there. And the fruit of it is. I've been able to have relationships with people to where this was prophetically spoken over me that they saw fire coming from the earth and a hand would go in and pull people out and the hand would not be scorched. Mm. I know that I'm meant to be in this world and influence people and care and meet them where they're at, which I think is very much what Christ did. Mm. So those are my gifts. I know, you know, I've got energy to be able to <laughs> last long hours and do crazy things and just trust God to not allow situations to steal my joy. And I think that inspires other people. When you say influence, can you expand on that? What do you mean by influence? What is influence? I have a blue check mark on Instagram. <laughs> no, <I'm amazing. laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Honestly, we are all influencers because one of my dreams with Love Fearless 
is to inspire people to do creative acts of kindness that people see the love of Jesus in the action. I don't want people to see what I'm doing and be like, wow, Justin's so great. Look at him. No, no. I want them to see the, the, the impact it has on them mm. and then them be inspired just the way we're supposed to be inspired by Jesus, that they would be inspired by the love of Jesus in me and that they would do it within their circle of influence. Mm. Everybody has influence in their lives. Everybody has people in their life that they have the closest, most powerful connection with to possibly change and influence their life that no one else has. Could be your kids. It could be a family. It could be a relative. It could be somebody that you were best friends with with your whole life. Somebody could be a better speaker than you and all these things, but that person would never listen to anybody else more than they would you. Mm, mm, that's so good. That's so good, brother. So you mentioned uh, Love Fearless. Let's talk about that a little bit. What's what's Love Fearless? How did it get started? What's the mission? What's the dream? Oh, it's, it's crazy. Oh my goodness. Love Fearless started, it really started, I would say six years ago when I auditioned for American Ninja Warrior, got on the show and then they asked me, what is your ninja name? Everyone has a ninja name and I didn't know what to say because I don't, I don't know what that, that's like an identity thing. What is your name? And I'm like, can't just be Justin Mena. So um, I started thinking about it. And I'm like, all right, God, like, I know that I love you and I know that you've allowed me to live fearless, or at least that's what people tell me. So I thought, all right, love God, live fearless was a mantra that I just like came up with on the spot. So I had my love God, live fearless shirts. Everyone wore it. People were inspired by it. They wanted to buy it themselves. And then a few years later, we just kind of rebranded it and said, you know what? I want to be in this world, but not of it. And I know I don't like love fearless. I don't want to be a God show or a God ministry, whatever. I don't want people to see that. I want them to be almost intrigued by the name love mm. fearless and almost question, what is that? I want them, just the way Jesus says, like, I want them to know me by like, I forget the exact scripture, but it's like, know me by the love. So I want them to just see a name like Love Fearless and treat them because you know how it is. If somebody sees God on something, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, forget that. I'm not gonna go there. But yet we are the church. Some people will never know Jesus by going into a building. Mm. That's the God on the title. That's why I removed that. Not that I'm ashamed of it, but I want to carry it through the mission. So a lot of people will get to know the Lord outside of the church because we represent it. So Love Fearless was just an intriguing word that represents your relationship with God can allow you to live fearless. But I want people to be intrigued by us being people of fearless love, that we will be willing to step outside our comfort zone to love somebody because our love that we've experienced from others or by Jesus will allow us to do that. Mm. So I don't know, it's kind of changed from a mantra to love fearless where I literally have an opportunity, depends, you know, it's mid-February, where I'm going to be in an environment, a high-end event, and Love Fearless just happens to be a beneficiary, and there's not going to be a lot of Christians there, but yet I'm going to be able to talk about our mission, and they're going to see the love of Jesus, but they're not going to know it. Mm. But when they get into it, they're going to see it. If they go to the event or into it long enough, they'll see it. Mm. That's my strategy. Got it. So is Love Fearless your business? Is it a nonprofit? What is it? It's the organization that I created with my sister, but it is technically an LLC. But I'm in the process of making it a nonprofit because I want people to know that this is something that I think the nonprofit route would expand faster, bring more awareness. I don't know. I just feel like I don't need to do that, but I just feel like it would open up more opportunities to say it is a, a nonprofit and come and support it, be a part of it. All the money, all the events that have run from Skid Row to an East Coast popular beach in Florida, we've done creative outreaches where I'll just give you an example. The future of Love Fearless will be an app where once a month, there's a creative outreach where people can join from all around the country and say, hey, you know what? With my organization, with my church, I want to join other people around the country, if not the world, to do these random acts of kindness. But one of the things I did in Clearwater, we did a bunch of things. It's just going to be more structured and one event at a time. So I don't have to worry about permits. I want all this money to be going right to outreach, not for permits and mm. insurance, things like that. Just to give you a heart of what we'd be doing is we'd have coconut waters or bottled waters and handing them out to strangers for a price. We would say, hey, you, you want some water? And when they are about to take it, say, oh, wait, it's 10 push-ups. It's 10 push-ups for the price of one bottle of water, but they can't earn it. 
We do the push-ups for them, which leaves us an opportunity to tell them we're doing this because we believe everything has a price, but you don't necessarily have to pay for it. And you'd be amazed at how many people are like, no, no, I can do the push-ups. And no, no, you can do 100 push-ups, but you can never earn this because that's just the way it works. Mm. We pay the price for you. You can pay the price for somebody else, but it opens up a gospel opportunity Mm. in a creative way. But we're like, we're grateful to have our fitness. We just want to demonstrate God's love through fitness and make it not weird but breaking the ice into a gospel message. Mm. That's what Love Fearless is about. So am I hearing you correctly? If I know it's more than this, but to kind of summarize some of what you're saying, it's, it's really yeah. a, an organization that focuses on creative outreach? Yes, yes. Is that a good summarization or would you throw some other words in there? The word uh, that comes to mind is like random acts of kindness. You know, that's the whole thing because everyone loves random acts of kindness. But once we do that, it doesn't just end. You know, we could ask a homeless person, hey, man, do you get, you have $5? I'm just really hungry. I don't have any money. When they do it, we bless them with a lot of money Mm. or something else. And they're like blown away. Hey, man, dude, we just love you. We just want to let you know that you don't necessarily deserve this. But man, is there something you're struggling with, man? Let's just break this over your life. When God's in the picture in your life, there's favor. Mm. Let's just pray for favor. Do you want to, you want a better life than you're living now and have that open up an opportunity for ministry for God to come in. So that's, that's the heart behind it. Mm. Random acts of kindness. And then behind the scenes, you're getting all this ministry life change. I love it, man. It's so, it is inspiring. And I think that's one of the things that you could just tell pours out of you is not just a desire to elevate your own influence, but to multiply that, to have, you know, not just people look at you and say, wow, Justin's really kind, or Justin is really creative, but to get the creative juices flowing in other people's mind thinking, how can I, you know, bless my neighbor, bless this, this person, this homeless person or whatever it is. I think it's just so obvious that you want to start something of a movement. Am I right in saying that? Yes. Yes. Absolute movement. And you know what? It's easy for pride to get to anybody. Mm. And the ones that are highlighted, like owners of organizations or a pastor of a church, they have to battle that more often. They are like, in a way, the head, you know, like we're all part of the body. Some person may be the arm. Some person may be this. Some people may be highlighted on camera or on stage. Those are the ones that really have to watch out for the pride and making sure that in their heart, they're humble and that they're really bringing glory to Jesus. Because Here's the thing, man. I love embracing adversity because it forces me to realize how weak I am. Mm. I need to know that my strength is coming from the Lord. Like even with speaking, it's so natural for me to be overwhelmed and to feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to say. If I don't have a script, what if I get it wrong? What am I going to do? But I'm trusting God to say, God, if you can truly speak the words out of my mouth, what would that look like? I'm Mm. never going to know unless I start doing that. Mm. And I'm doing that more by saying yes to things that people literally look at me and say, wow, you're so fearless. I do things afraid all the time. And it keeps me in check and saying, God, I never want to be fearless. That was the whole message. When I overcame my fear of sharks, I thought if I jumped across the long story short, I knew God was going to help me overcome my fear of sharks. I jumped off my dock at midnight. This is a longer story, but I jumped off my dock at midnight, swim across the canal and back, did it by myself. And this is a body of water in the Boca Sega Bay in Florida where a man 10 years prior jumped on a bull shark. There's bull sharks out there. And it's not wise to probably jump at midnight, but I knew that was my worst fear. And I was like, God, I know if I do this, it would unlock a level of faith, trusting you, God, with my life. When I did that, I thought when I accomplished it, it felt great. But I was like, God, does this mean that I should be fearless? I should do it again without fear? And God said, no, the fact that you were willing to do it afraid means more than doing it fearless because the honest truth there's no way I could do it again and not and be fearless. Mm. But God said, this is what it's like to be strong in your own weakness. Mm. And I was just like, God, no matter what I do, let me never feel like I'm, I'm self-sufficient, that I can do this on my own. Mm. So I want to go into things saying, God, I'm screwed if you don't show up. I want to mm. always keep that and it'll keep me fresh and keep me keep that joy and keep people seeing more of Jesus in my weakness. Yes. But anyway, that's it's. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, that dependency, that's how we all want to live. I think it can be easy to just keep putting things in our lives where it's not necessary for God to actually come through. I mean, that's really what we're reaching for. Is I mean, I think for me, I did a recent study in the Bible on humility and 
in biblically speaking, it looks like the word humility in the Bible is more linked to it's not so much about thinking low about yourself. It's it's more linked to dependency on God. That really is the essence of humility is, God, I need you. It really is as, as simple mm-hmm. as that. Do you think you have something of a, a life message? You know, you're being asked to speak a lot more. Is there something that you think this is is something that, I mean, you even mentioned prophetic before, like almost prophetically speaking that your life speaks of? I would say you can overcome anything if you know the Lord is behind you, and you will never overcome your worst fear if you do not know who the Lord is and know his power. One question I like to ask people to to kind of test your, your faith is if you can just think, what is your worst fear? Your worst fear imaginable. If God asked you to overcome that very fear, would you say yes? Would you be open to saying, you know what, God, I will do that. And if I were to be honest with myself as an example, I think all of us would naturally like to say, yeah, we'll do it. But what are we doing now in our lives? What are we doing with different convictions that we have that aren't necessarily popular? Those are all going to be tested. But think of your worst fear. Would you be willing to do it? Me, if I were to be honest, I would say, God, I don't know if I would. Mm. I don't know. Would I be strong enough to be able to be crucified on a cross in front of everybody for my faith? Mm. I'd like to say yes. But how do you really know? That's why every single day I'm like, God, give me the strength to be able to know that if you did, I would say yes. So God, give me, give me a baby step of something that I can be training for, that I can be outside, step outside my comfort zone today. Help me serve somebody that I don't feel like doing it. Don't be a slave to your feelings, but do everything that the Lord tells you to do. And you're going to be humbled like you were alluding to Mm. and say, God, I need you, but God help me become a warrior. So the lesson would be don't live a complacent life, constantly be challenging yourself, but God says rest. Mm. And your definition, one thing I've learned is my definition of rest, which could be taking a day off and wow, let me do a workout or this, that, and whatever it is. My definition, long story short of rest was very different than God's definition of rest. So if you are not feeling recharged and refreshed and rested, maybe what God has commanded you to do, which is once a week to rest is not God's definition of rest. And that may be why you're not as productive because God will open up some of the craziest doors do your rest because God even honors that. He'll even say in the word, like when you make time for me, it may not make sense. It's like in Proverbs, but he'll open up opportunities because he values that time that you make to spend on him. And he'll want to bless you from that Mm. because he'll know that, Hey, you know what? This, this son or daughter is really seeking me. I want to bless them a little extra. They don't have to. God's crazy with his wisdom from like Proverbs to Ecclesiastes to Job, all these wisdom books of like, well, oh, okay, so if we do good, God will bless us. Well, in Ecclesiastes, it's like, it's kind of random. You don't know. And then Job, <laughs> right. it's like, shoot, man, what the heck happens? Like he's going <laughs> through all this stuff and it turns out good in the end. But at the end, it wasn't, it's just crazy. Yes. We don't know how God works, but it's for, it's for the greater good. And at yes. the end of our lives, I think the most important thing that we want is to know that at the very end of our life, God is like, well done, good and faithful servant. You were, you did exactly what you were supposed to do. Yes. I want that. So and that means to be, we need to be all in for that. Yes, yes, absolutely. What does the day of rest look like for you? So I'll give you an example of something I did that like allowed me to have great sleep. It was so difficult, but it was so good. So I found out like a really cool spot. One of my little secret spots is uh, at Montage in Laguna Beach. Beautiful resort. And there's like little caves. There's like a beautiful beach. And it's just beautiful. So for me, I put my phone on airplane mode. And I, I committed to having the entire day to not look at my phone at all. Phone was on airplane mode and it could be fun, you know, like, hey, you know, like for those of you who are my age, you remember MapQuest or things like oh, printing yeah. your instructions, <laughs> you know, you don't need to do that. You could use your phone to get there, but that is it. Like keep it on airplane mode. Once you get to where you're going, you don't need to be super strict about it unless you want to make it an adventure, but airplane mode all day and saying, God, where do I want to go? Let me have a book that I can read. Let me let me just lay down. Give yourself permission to say, what do you want to do? And then make time to just listen. If you struggle with praying, I tell people, just cry out to the Lord. Ask him, what do you want? Ask him what you're tired of. Say, God, I'm t- I feel lonely. I, I want to be in a relationship. I feel like I'd be in a relationship. God, I'm tired of my job. Like God wants to hear those things. He cares mm. to hear it, but also make time to just do nothing. Rest, just listen. And it may feel awkward for you, but God wants you to do that. So making time to go to a beach, 
Maybe listen to some music, maybe listen to nothing, just walk on the beach. Give yourself that permission to have a date with yourself and do what you want to do. It may be that God is showing you the insecurities that you don't know how to do that. Hmm. Talk to somebody about it and say, I don't know how to have a date with myself. I don't feel secure being by myself. That comes to identity. That comes to not knowing that you have dominion over the earth to do the things that you want to do. Maybe you're so full of fear. They're like, I'm afraid of feeling stupid because I'm going to a restaurant and everyone's going to look at me and judge me because I'm sitting here alone. You know, get over that. You'll have such freedom. God's yeah. given you the spirit of fearlessness so that you can be truly free. And one quote I want to share from the movie Braveheart, man, it resonates with me so well, is your heart is free. Now have the courage to follow it. Mm. And a lot of people don't have the freedom to follow the heart that he's given you to mm. be free. That's why people don't have joy in their lives. Yes. So if you have the joy of the Lord, no matter what happens, you, he's going to give you that courage to be able to, to, to conquer anything that's in your way from, from your fulfillment and also bettering God's kingdom. Yes, yes, that's so good. I think it is living from that identity. I think a lot of people think, okay, is this kind of mind over matter stuff? One of my mentors uses the analogy of he flies to England a lot. And when he's flying to England, obviously it's a different time zone. So when he gets there, you know, he has to to change his watch to show the correct time zone. And so even though it doesn't feel like it's two o'clock in the afternoon, the reality is it's two o'clock in the afternoon. And the reality is God has given you a new heart. Like you you quoted that verse. He hasn't given you a, a spirit of fear. He's given you a spirit of of power and love and self-control. And so the way that that we actually change is not just gritting our teeth and trying to go against you know, what we think is is who we are. It's actually aligning with our identity. It's outworking our identity and, and taking steps that say, okay, this is who God's made me to be on the inside. So now I'm going to start to live it on the outside. I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll say this really quick. You know, a lot of people just stop at this scripture. They'll stop halfway through. You know, God works all things together for good. That's not the whole thing. God works all things together for good for those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. So if you are in right standing with God, God will allow you who you truly are to adapt to your environment, which means that you'll be like Paul, thanking God for your trials. That mm. doesn't make sense, but but it does make sense if you realize what are the purpose of trials. You know, some people were were abused growing up. There are so many things that people were taken advantage of that they could easily try to blame God, but it didn't come from God, but God will work it. All things, all your trials for good. How does he do that? Through your testimony. He'll mm. work it because he'll realize that all those trials will develop perseverance so that you can be made complete and not lacking anything. Mm. Like those are why trials are there yes. to realize that we battle not against flesh and blood. And when you realize it's all to point back to him, you realize, wow, God, I really need to embrace it. I need to be adapted. And God will allow you to adapt to anything if you truly know who you are, how you have dominion and you have his authority, no matter what happens, you will literally be okay in this world and conquer and have a mighty impact. I don't care what it is. At the end of your life, I'll share just one last thing here, unless you had some other questions, but there are people trying to perform so hard for God's approval, but God will make it clear to you. God is, does not give you confusion. He's not a spirit of confusion. But if he puts something on your heart, do it. Because at the end of your life, we're all going to take into account for it. One guy could be like, hey, I was a pastor. I, I saved 10,000 people. He's like, hey, I didn't want you to do that. You remember mm. that time I put that in your heart? I wanted you to do this. You would have reached 10 million people. Mm. And then somebody else could say, oh, I was a businessman. I did this or that. That's not what I asked you to do. And then you have this mother who's like, well, I actually, I, I didn't, I just poured everything I could into my three children. That mm. was all I did. That's all I knew what God told me to do. Mm. And God's like, bless you. That's exactly what I wanted you to do. And through that, those people impacted 50 million people, because mm. that is what your goal was. It may not be flattering in other people's eyes, but in God's eyes, you will never go wrong if you listen to him. And that's true freedom to know that you have no conviction against God. Like mm. that's how, you know, you have the Holy spirit when he gives you a conviction, but how cool is it to know that you are free to do whatever. And there will be people that will constantly say, Hey, well, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Your mentors may tell you not to do something. It may sound good, but if God puts something in your heart, I'm telling you, do it. Mm. Because at the end of the life, even if you're wrong, God will see your heart that you were wanting to serve him. Mm. So, so that's good. the importence of having it independent. So good. 
I'm going to put you on the spot here, but even as as you were just saying Uh-oh, that, I just, I, love it. I just felt a, a measure of faith for you to pray for, for somebody listening to this. If you'd be open to it, I'd love to have you just say a quick prayer for, you know, whether somebody's in their car or they're cleaning their house or whatever it is. And maybe some of the things that you're saying are just lighting this fire in them. That's it's stirring the coals. Would you be willing to, to just take a moment to pray for our listeners? Absolutely. Father, I thank you so much for specifically for that person who's just, for whatever reason, there were a lot of obstacles for them not to even be on this call, to even listen, Father, whether it was shared or whether they just happened to stumble across it, but they're still listening right now, Father, but they are struggling. There's something burning in them that, that, that they can't be able to let go of, Father. I just pray right now with the authority of you, Jesus, that they would just let go. Father, like right now, whoever's listening to this and you feel like I'm speaking right to you, just lift up your hands right now. And Father, I just pray that you would bless them and touch them. Allow them to see that the power to break through this cycle, this chain is not within them. It's, it's, it's only of you. And Father, they can only break that with your help. So Father, if they do not know you and they are open They are open to having the power of you, Jesus, in their life. Not just God, because that could be misrepresented. But Father, it's a relationship with God through you, Jesus. We can't have a relationship with God no matter how hard we try. And God's standard is perfection. And the wages of sin is death. So Father, thank you for right now just allowing them to realize their need for Jesus, that, that personal relationship with him. So Father, I just pray that if they're open to it, that they would they would just ask you to just receive Jesus as their, as their savior, as their Umi to be able to get them in to the pearly gates, Father, through that. So Father, and if there is something in them that really wants to go all in with Jesus, that they would come, that they would reach out and that one of us, that people on this team would reach out to them and, and personally pray with them and hear what they've got going on. You matter. You matter. You matter not only to Jesus, but people your family, your family of choice, your brother, you have brothers and sisters that you may have never heard of, but God's waiting for you to go all in. When you go all in, you'd be amazed at how God will use the rest of his body to be able to meet those needs. But Father, I just ask for guidance, for grace with them, that they would understand your forgiveness, that you've taken care of their past, present, and future sins, that you love them, that when they make a mistake, you're just literally with loving arms open, say, all right, I knew you were going to do that. Mm-hmm. I knew you're going to fall short, but that's why I sent my son. Hey, let's get, let's do it again. I bet we can do better that God, when we fail, you never want us to have shame and guilt. You've given us the conviction of through your Holy spirit to know that, Hey, this is wrong, but we need you even more. We need you even more. So father, I just pray that you would give them grace and a whole new soften their heart so that you can take that heart out and give them a whole fresh one, give them a new perspective of that. Their, their hopes and dreams matter that you want to fulfill them, yes, that sir. there are things that, They are meant to do that you are meant to break through on a whole new level. But Father, allow them to realize they don't have to do it alone. They're not meant to do it alone and that they matter. They are loved and valued. And I just love that, Jesus. And I thank you in the name of Jesus for breaking those chains because you care about the heart. And Father, anybody who is open with just receiving that love, Father, it's more than just my words, Father. I could say one word and Holy Spirit, you will do it. But Father, my faith is that you would honor every person's heart that is open to that. Mm. that you would radically transform their life and that their ministry would start right away. Yes. And they would see that it is so good, even if there's trials. And I just thank you and seal this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Woo. Amen. Amen, man. My hands are sweaty. That's how I can tell the Holy Spirit's uh-huh. moving. I start to get all sweaty. So man, I appreciate uh, you. That's so good. <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much. Taking the time to uh, to not only pray for us, but also share your story as well. Hey, if somebody connected with your story or wants to get involved with uh, Love Fearless, what's the best way to get in touch with you or or with uh, some of the things that you're doing? Two ways. Right now, I'm in the middle of revamping the Love Fearless site, but as of now, and it should still work, lovefearless.com, you'll get a little pop-up for an email list if you sign up for our mailing list, which would be once a month, you could opt out anytime. I actually, in the welcome email, I will give you a my jumpstart guide to, to living fearless. So mm. it's a free little PDF. And that's just something that I think will encourage you with dreams and desires if you're struggling with what that looks like. And also on my Instagram, that's mm. where I engage. I've got some crazy stories on there. And honestly, if you're struggling with something, I never want to be too busy that I can't make time for that. Whether I do that personally or whether I do that through a team, 
I want you to know that I, I really care about you mm. and just send me a DM and let me know what's going on. And I personally will help out or have a team to be able to help look at that individual need. Cause I don't want you to have to go somewhere else if you're genuine about getting help in an area. Mm. So yeah, my name is Justin Mena official uh, because this guy from Kenya took Justin Mena. Supposedly Mena is a popular tribe <laughs> in Kenya. So I had to be, I had to think of something. So I don't know, back in the time when I developed it, in 2012, you know, I got Justin Mena official because that was a popular thing to do back then. <laughs> Excellent. So again, if you want to get that jumpstart guide on how to live fearless, you can go to lovefearless.com and Justin will send that to you. Otherwise, you know, I started following you on Instagram quite a while ago. I love seeing all your crazy stories and different things that you have going on. So uh, that's uh, Justin M-A-I-N-A official. Do I have that right? Yes. Justin yep. Mena official. Well, Justin, it has been a privilege and an honor to have you on. I personally enjoyed it, appreciated getting to know you more. So thank you for, for joining us on this week's episode. Thank you so much. And just to end, I want to remind you guys on social media, your best parts of your life are behind the scenes. They may never be on Instagram. Don't feel like you need to do that. So just, just filling that out there. Let your best <laughs> memories be behind the scenes. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you.